So we're going to spend just a few minutes here talking about the introduction to chapter 16, and we'll pick up right where we leave off here on Thursday in class. So the first thing I wanted to show you is in the chapter 16 reference materials folder in Brightspace, you will see, um, as I already pointed out, links to the videos from last semester in case you wanted to go ahead. And um, some of that certainly will be helpful next week when I will not be here. So probably this conclusion video you will be watching on your own next week to finish up chapter 16. There's also a separate video for one exercise and the mastery problem for this chapter is a little bit challenging as some of them are. And so I'm pointing out to you that there is a video here that walks you through and explains that chapter 16 problem. I would really like to have you try that problem on your own before you go right to this video. The other thing I will point out is sometimes for the mastery problems, if I have videos for them, the numbers in my problem may be different than the numbers in your problem. So the problem itself would be exactly the same, but with different values included. And so watching the video will show you how to get the answers using the numbers I have, but you may still have to do the calculations on your own, even with the video. But you'd be following the same you know, formulas and computations. Yes, sir. Um, that makes me ask, uh, what about the chapter 15 uh, problem? So that my, is there a video? Is that what you're asking? Or was there? Just kind of like in general, um, like do we go over that problem? Class so, okay, so now I know what you're saying. So the problem is meant to be done outside of class. Right. So if you have questions on it, I can, I can answer them. Um, if there are brief questions, I certainly can answer them in class. If you really are stuck on you know, large portions of the problem, I would ask you to either email me and ask for help or schedule time okay. with me during office hours. And if there are several people who are asking about the same thing, then I would probably you know, do a video. And if there isn't, and there already, there is not one because I'm, I, can, it would, I would see it here if there was one. So my guess is that the chapter 15 problem has not been really a okay. difficulty for people or else it already be a video in existence. I was just kind of curious. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't go over them in class. We don't go over them before or after you do them unless there are really lots of questions about it. Um, but it is meant to be done outside of class. But as I said um, last week, I'm happy to help with anything other than the exams. So if you're stuck and you need more help, you just need to let me know that. The other thing that's in this chapter 16 folder, let me go back to my preview mode. Oh, that threw me out. Um, the other thing that's in the chapter 16 folder that I wanna to bring to your attention, although we won't be using it today, we'll be using it next class, is this traditional approach to overhead allocation. And so this, I know it's a lot of words on the page, but it does explain how to do the calculations that we will be doing for overhead allocation. And so that will be important reference for you also. And let's spend the last about six minutes we have here talking about chapter 16, at least getting us set so that on Thursday, we can jump right into the work for this chapter. So chapter 16 is on job order costing that is contrasted with chapter 17, which is called process cost systems. So we're um, looking at companies, again, that are making the products that they sell and how do they find, how do, we, how do they calculate those costs? How do they work this through their accounting records? So we're going to start out with, and I'm going to ask you to make sure you read this on your own, particularly uh, objective number one, what type of cost systems are there that are used by manufacturing businesses? So why would a company use job order costing, which is the focus of this chapter, compared to a process costing system in chapter 18? No, sorry, chapter 17. 
So the cost system itself, whether it's process or job order costing system, the whole point is to have a way of tracking those costs to figure out how much did this product make or cost us to produce? Why do we need to know how much a, a product cost? Well, if we don't know how much it costs us to produce, how do we know how much to charge our customers? So that's probably number one. Number two, we need to be able to report our costs correctly, accurately, in a way that represents the actual work of the company so that when people look at our financial statements, they are meaningful, right? So if the cost that we reflect on our financial statements doesn't, um, doesn't account for our true costs of producing and selling the product, then our financial statements that people are using to make decisions about our company are possibly going to lead them in in an inappropriate direction, lead them to make a decision that's really not a valid decision. So as we look at the, the cost accounting systems all together, regardless of which type, the purpose is to be able to accurately project, predict, and report how much our product cost us to make. And so I just said that. These, these are the reasons that we need to know why or how much the product cost us in, a, in as accurate a way as possible. So job order costing systems, the focus of this chapter, job order costing systems are designed for companies or used by companies that make a product where there's a clearly defined beginning and end to the production process. So they know, oh, look, I'm done with that job. I'm done with that batch of the product where every product they make, every batch might have a different cost. So they may be custom making some products. So if you're a home builder, you would use a job order costing system because you can easily, conveniently, economically trace the cost to a specific house, right? And you wanna make sure that you are properly charging your customer, the home buyer for that home. So you need to know, hey, that's the sink that went into that house not the more expensive one that we put into this house over here. We can easily do that. But if you are a, a company that makes the same thing over and over and over, even if they could trace cost to a specific product, why would they want to? So if you're making, let's say televisions and it's an assembly line and you're making, I don't know, a thousand televisions on a shift, do you really need to know how much the seventh television cost compared to the 777th television, they're all the same. And so a company like that, that's making the same thing over and over, large quantities, large volume of, of the same product, they would not use a job order costing system. They would use what we're going to cover in chapter 17, a process costing system. So the difference is, Companies that use job order costing are tracing cost to a specific cost object, a specific um, product or batch of products. In a process costing system, they trace cost to a time period rather than to a specific product, a specific television or a specific bicycle or a specific shirt. When they're making 1,700 shirts that are all the same, they don't need to know the cost of one specific shirt. The other type of manufacturer that would use a process costing system is one that has a continuous process, like a liquid process. So you'll notice on here, one of the examples is an oil refinery. And I'm just going to warn you right now that before I was a professor, I was a stay-at-home mom. And before that, I was actually working in accounting. And, and my one of my jobs in accounting was as a cost accountant for an oil refinery, <clears throat> excuse me. And the oil refinery at the time was Kendall Motor Oil, which may be a brand that's familiar to some of you. There, the refinery is located in Bradford, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour maybe from here or so. Um, it was not that far for me when I, because I don't live in the Jamestown area. So, um, so you'll hear me use that oil refinery example regularly because that's one of the examples that I have from my own personal professional um, career. They have a liquid process. 
they push crude oil in one end of the refinery and, and they have streams coming off of the various components that make up that oil. And so they are the classic case of a process cost system because it's impossible to separate out one barrel of oil that was fed in the start of the process from the next barrel because it all mixes together in the tanks, right? So, um, and I see we are out of time. So we are going to stop there for today, but at least you have the sense of what the difference between job order and process costing. Please make sure you read objective one on your own. And so when we come in on Thursday, we can move right ahead to how do we actually use job order costing? What does it look like? Okay.